Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Democracy 3 Africa. My name, of course, is Orbital Potato. This is Botswana. Let's get right into it. And first off the bat, we need to note that whilst people still don't really like us, right? They, you know, they're not, they're not a big fan. Uh, however, they hate us a lot less than they actually did. So we're seeing membership uh, of all of these really, really violent groups just going down. And that is something that we're really, really positive about. Because let's face it, it means that we're less likely to get killed. Which is, uh, which is really, 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 really nice. Uh, credit rating has still got to fall further. I really, really, really want to see that credit rating fall further. Um, but GDP is continuing, strong growth, and, uh, you know, we are eventually moving into a territory where we're going to have a constant surplus. Fingers crossed. That is, of course, if the global economy decides uh, to continue going up, which it almost inevitably won't do, but hey-ho. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. What is this other? What? What is going on? Oh, this, this must be... Um, foreign aid that's kind of cool or maybe it's not maybe it's just a graphical bug I guess it can't be foreign aid foreign aid wouldn't be reported in income yeah that's really weird that must be some sort of a, a graphical bug but that's okay we'll we'll get over it I'm sure it'll fix itself next turn uncompetitive economy is still pissing us off to an extent that it's annoying uh, we did start residential credit facilities. We talked a little bit about this in the last episode. Um, when stability gets high enough, basically, and technology and infrastructure are there to support it, then you get you get this brand new green bubble that uh, was not present in the original Democracy 3 game, which is really, really cool. How are we doing on stuff like malaria and HIV AIDS? HIV AIDS, massive, massive dip there, thanks to the sexually transmitted disease education program. Nice to see. Uh, technology backwater is coming down very, very slowly, but it's going to give us a nice little 7% boost to GDP. Uh, desertification? Uh, 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 I mean, it's not exactly, not exactly fantastic, but hey-ho. Uh, agricultural efficiency? Apparently that agro-dealer networks nonsense uh, was kind of, kind of a little bit bad for, uh, for making the, the whole country into a desert but hey ho all right so we actually kind of have to win an election in six turns and that's not something that i'm super super excited about uh, it might be worth just cutting income tax because that is gonna make people completely love us it will put us in a little bit of a, a deficit situation but i don't really know if that's something that we want to do i mean it's fairly fairly you know financially irresponsible of us to do that and I don't think I'd uh, I'd really like to to do that. How close are we to finishing this class warfare nonsense? Because it is ridiculous how long it's taking. Um, quite a while away it seems, but you know, a couple of turns is not is not too bad. Uh, let's introduce some new policies. I feel I feel we're in the need for uh, we're in the need. We're not in the need. Uh, I feel like we need some new subsidies. Capital equipment subsidies. Well, ideally, I would like something that is. Quite cheap. Home fabrication grants. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not too bothered about that. Maybe, maybe something a little bit cheaper, a little bit more useful. Uh, an idea that I did have was, let's see if it's around. Maybe we've introduced it already. Community policing is community policing. Yeah, community policing is already something that we've introduced. I think we introduced it last episode. Uh, I'm super, super happy that we actually did because. Really, really great policy, and it's just one of those policies that you should probably introduce, irregardless of what uh, what playthrough you're doing, because it really, really is the absolute best. Uh, nothing, nothing else that you know sticks out to me as crazy interesting. Uh, intellectual property, yeah, let's let's do this. Let's see what this actually does. Okay, this is this is kind of interesting. Technology is going to be increased by a whopping almost twenty percent. Foreign investment up. And, uh, and poor people are going to dislike us a little bit more, but honestly, I'm not too, too worried by that. Besides, class warfare is going to be ending very, very shortly, and this is going to, well, it's really, really, really going to make a lot of people a lot more happy with us. And let me tell you, I cannot wait until it uh, disappears. All right, rebel forces from a neighboring country are seeking sanctuary. Uh, we're going to deny. 
We're going to deny that. And we're back into deficit. That is annoying. And unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to grow ourselves out of this deficit. But we'll have to wait and see. Let's go to the next turn. Journalist released from jail. Fantastic. I don't know why the conservatives don't like that. Our credit rating has been upgraded. Oh my goodness. That is great news. And I actually think that that... Let me, well, let me just check. I think that that... Uh, that that little modifier, you know, those couple of little boosts that we got to GDP there, I think that has actually led to our GDP continuing to rise. Now, why did my income and expenditure just plummet? What the heck is going on here? What the heck? What did I do? What What the heck? They both fell very, very quickly. I don't believe that I did anything dramatically wrong there. When is this class warfare ending? Class warfare is definitely ending next turn. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, and you know what? If we continue at this at this rate of growing our, you know, growing our, our voter base, then I guess that we could be in for another term, which is you know kind of what we're aiming for here. Let's let's be honest. It's not a you know it's not a direct aim, but it is an indirect aim of wanting to to do what's best for the country, I suppose. Uh, technology backwater also very 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 close to ending and that is going to once again spur on our gdp hiv aids not much we can really do about that and malaria not much we can really do about that i mean we're doing as much as we possibly can to try and combat this but uh, it's taken an awfully long time which is a little bit annoying we've got 42 political capital in the bank let's spend it because let's face it we're going to have to get rid of it because we can't just can't just muck around with a lot of a lot of political capital you need to spend it compulsory work for the unemployed no not really religious rest day no i'm not really capitalists aren't gonna really like that small business grants let's give small business grants a shot sweet okay so gdp is going to be boosted which is what we like to see self-employed people don't care about capitalist happiness we do care about uh, decreasing numbers of socialists and decreasing number of trade unionists. Don't really care. It's going to cost us a little bit of money, 1.23 billion or whatever. But I'm confident with the with getting rid of this, then we are going to be able to, you know, not make not make a massive difference to GDP, but make everybody a little bit happier, which is kind of kind of nice. I honestly don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but this technology backwater clearing up, it should cover that 1.23 billion little splurge that I just went on. I don't really know. I do not really know. Oh! Survivor. They say some politicians are political survivors, but you really define the world, the word, with the way you have by keep dodging those terrorist plots. Here, have a shiny medal. Another failed assassination attempt by the land army. Class warfare has finally ended. Oh, thank goodness. And GDP was very, very stagnant there. Not great. Not great at all. I have literally zero idea why this big drop down happened. Um, I don't know. I do not. I do not physically know. I do not have any understanding of why that happened. But hey ho, I guess. Now, why do people hate us? People really shouldn't hate us. Like, there are zero zero people in this group, and yet there is still a a fairly high threat assessment. I don't know if that's entirely correct. Technology backwater is either ending next turn or this turn or this coming turn. I uh, I do not know. Uncompetitive economy. Uncompetitive economy we have to solve. We literally just have to solve. We just have to get rid of it because it is it is hurting us. This lack of lack of productivity is really really hurting us. Um unemployment seems to be really holding us back. Health also seems to be holding us back. Malaria, malaria. We need to get rid of malaria somehow. How how else can we get rid of malaria? I don't know. I do not know how we can get rid of malaria. But it all it all stems. All of the problems in uncompetitive economy stem from productivity. Education is is really really high, right? So, I don't know why I keep on clicking this. I should be clicking directly on the productivity button. But. Uh, Productivity is so unbelievably disappointing. Maybe 
unemployment's not even that high. Like, what is the issue here? Military spending? Should we just, like, you know, spend a shit ton more on our military? Make liberals dislike us a little bit more, but it would seriously decrease unemployment. We'll give it a shot, actually. We'll give it a shot. It's gonna... It's gonna put us a little bit more in the hole in terms of our deficit, which is not something that I'm super, super happy about, but... You know, I guess we'll... I guess we'll see... I'll guess we'll see where it takes us, because... If it's, if it's able to get rid of this uncompetitive economy nonsense, then it will totally be worth spending that extra, you know, couple of billion to get an 11%, 11% uh, increase to our GDP. I don't know. I don't know, folks. I really do not know. It's going to be interesting to see what the heck happens. Uh, but the threat assessment is still bad, which is, which is not exactly fantastic. Not exactly fantastic. Let's go about introducing some new policies. Let's introduce some policies that are kind of popular. Because let's not forget that, you know, we've got an election that's just around the corner and, uh, you know, kind of want uh, some popular policies. Foreign aid? Foreign aid might be something nice. Yeah, let's do let's do foreign relate. Foreign relate? Foreign aid. Let's give it a shot. Uh, we'll spend an extra couple of billion on that. Not exactly the most, um, you know, productive use of money, but hey-ho. Also, family planning. Let's Let's have a look at this gonna make religious people unhappy oh this is fantastic it's gonna it's gonna reduce HIV AIDS and as soon as we can get this implemented I think that that would be absolutely fantastic uh, women are going to are going to like this policy it's gonna increase education and increase health uh, and only upset religious and conservative people and it's basically free well it's not technically basically free uh, but that is really really good news you know that is really darn good news very, 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 very happy with that. Now, where did it go? Where did uh, where did family planning go? There we go. Uh, population growth. The rate at which your country's population is growing. Okay. Um, I don't really know if we want this to go up. It increased, increases the number of youths in our country. That's it. How is immigration doing? Immigration is kind of picking up, actually. Because we're a nice, stable country, we've got a fair amount of immigration uh, going on. Our border controls are fairly strict. Kind of in the middle, to be honest. Kind of in the middle. I don't know. Everybody seems to be really, really happy with us. Capitalists especially? Man, oh man. They actually kind of like what's going on, which is unusual for a country uh, that I am running. I'll be honest with you. It's, it's kind of unusual. Uh, but honestly, I think the policies that we've introduced are going to definitely, definitely, definitely make a difference. And, oh man. Oh man. Awesome. Super happy with that. Alright, let's see if we can try and win an election by the time this episode is, uh, is up. Oh, beautiful. Full employment. Have you seen the long queues of jobless citizens queuing for work? Neither have I, nor will I. In this land of full employment, and we uh, owe it all to you and your work. That is awesome. That credit rating downgraded is uh, is not fantastic, though. Now, let's see if our productivity is actually going to go up. Because why is unemployment? Why is unemployment having such a negative effect on productivity when it's literally zero? Are you telling me that unemployment is inversely proportional to productivity? No. Are you telling me that it's directly proportional to productivity? What I mean by that is that if unemployment is super low, why... Why, why are we still not super productive? I, I don't understand this. I do not understand this. Uh, we could actually adjust the labor laws. I mean, they are currently pro-employer. But we could change it to... Pro-union. And that would... That would have... A bad effect... Let's try, let's try increase it. Let's try doing this a little bit, okay? It's going to be controversial, but we're going to do it. Because I have a funny feeling that the working week, the working week is not really super essential. It's just productivity, which we just need to increase. We just need to increase it. We need to, need to really, really increase it. And I don't know how we can uh, without upsetting a whole bunch of people. So... 
unemployment is just completely fucking us up. Like, it's just reducing productivity. It says it's only reducing productivity by 2.6%, although I... Oh, no, that's... Uh, it's affecting productivity. Okay, so it's affecting productivity by minusing it by uh, 21% or whatever. It's also having a couple of other effects. Uh, increasing wages by 20%, so... That's kind of nice, I guess. I, I honestly don't know how we're gonna how we're gonna grow our productivity from this point onwards. I really really don't. It's very it's gonna be very very challenging. Uh, that technology backwater is gonna be ending. Oh my god! Have you seen our popularity over the past one, two, three, four, five turns? We have become super super popular, and fingers crossed we continue to be super super popular. Oh my god! It's amazing, amazing. Um, yeah. This, this uncompetitive economy, bollocks, is really, really pissing me off. You know, an 11% reduction to GDP is just not something that we can really be having right now. Well, let's go to the next turn. And let's try and, you know, bish bash bosh out an election. Technology backwater has ended. Fantastic. That is going to provide a sorely needed boost to our GDP just when it actually needed it. And how is our budget looking? We're still running a deficit, although I'm pretty certain that... In the next turn, we're going to be able to uh, get rid of of that deficit thanks to the growth of our GDP. Like get rid of get rid getting rid of that technology backwater was super super important. Uh, how long is family planning going to take to implement itself? Four turns, it says. So we should be uh, that should be happening fairly fairly soon. Productivity is still abysmally bad. Yeah, this is this is not good. This is this is not good at all. Is there any way that we can subsidize anything? <sighs> Food stamps are usually a good a good policy. How is our how is our poverty at the moment? Poverty is actually kind of high. We could probably do with um, with some food stamps or some uh, some implementation of that policy. But I'm just seeing if there's actually any way that we can foreign investment restrictions, regional regional integration and tariffs. Harmonize business and political practices beyond... Yeah, let's let's try introducing this. Let's try introducing this. Capitalists like it. Dictatorship. International trade. Okay, so this is going to have quite a few knock-on effects, which is kind of what we like to see. Um, I'm just... I'm looking at... I'm looking at trying to subsidize something. And I don't know if that'll actually make a difference. Uh, capital equipment subsidies... This should really... Wow, holy cow, a 16% boost to GDP if we introduce this policy. Uh, yes, please. I'll take that. It's going to put us unbelievably in a big bad hole. Um, but honestly, you know, we're socialist. We're not going to spend out of this situation. Well, we are going to spend out of the situation. We're not going to cut out of this situation. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to cut anything. Uh, and our popularity is actually above 50%, which is kind of crazy. Which is kind of absolutely insane, actually. Um, we are looking into subsidies, but I don't know if that's actually going to affect the uncompetitive economy, Redbubble. Foreign military training. Yeah, we'll accept that. GDP fell down a little bit. How is our... We're running a, an 8 billion deficit. That's really not great. Especially as the global economy, I feel, is just about to go into free fall. It's not a great situation to be in. Not a great situation to be in at all. It looks like HIV AIDS is going to start going down very, very soon anyway. This is good news. This is very, very, very good news. And uh, that's going to allow health to really, really take off. Fingers crossed. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything else that we can really do to malaria. Malaria is just going to continue going down uh, over the course of time, which is really, really nice. Uh, food stamps, which is a policy that I really did want to introduce. I don't think we can really do it with an 8 billion deficit. I don't think that that is the right thing to do. I think we should probably save our political capital for the next turn so that we can increase income tax as soon as this election is done. That may sound very disingenuous. You would be entirely correct. But honestly, we need we need more money. We really, really do. Or maybe we should introduce a policy that taxes the rich. Capital gains tax, maybe. Luxury goods tax, yeah, no, that's it's not a good not a good tax. Automation tax or a punitive wealth tax. 
Maybe a punitive wealth tax is something that we'd like. Maybe... Yeah, maybe a... Or maybe an automation tax. An automation tax might just be the ticket that we're looking for. Let's let's introduce it, actually. It's only going to bring us in a little bit of money. Well, let's give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. We'll try and get two billion out of this out of this little tax, and we can try introduce a whole plethora of other taxes rather than just you know one tax. We could introduce a couple of little taxes. And try and get two billion from each of them. My worry is though, with policies like this, we actually are decreasing our GDP, which is really not good. But you know what? That's an extra four billion that we're gonna be making each turn due to our due to our taxes. Toll roads? Can we make a little bit more from toll roads? Not really. Not really. We can't really ask for that. That's a little bit of a shame, actually. That's a little bit of a shame. Okay, well, we're going to continue our taxing uh, regime as soon as we go to the next turn and finish up this whole election process. I'm fairly confident that we're going to be able to win. Yes, there we go. There we go. Nobody hates us. Everybody loves us. This is very, very nice to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, that music. That music is sweet. The sweet sound of victory. Uh, a breakdown of the voters, in case you care, doesn't really matter. Uh, wealthy people were the largest group of people that didn't vote for me. They voted for the opposition. That's fine. Changes that we've made. Poverty has actually increased, but we have a plan to tackle that, and that is, of course, food stamps. That's going to help it go down. Equality is up. Crime is down. Education is up. Health is up by two-thirds. Violent crime is down by 66%. My god. Environment is up. Working week is down, which is alright, I guess. Technology is up by 20%. Car usage down. Rail usage down. Bus usage stayed roughly the same. Uh, CO2 emissions are up a little bit, but that's okay. That's helping our growing economy, I guess. Productivity has actually gone up, believe it or not, even though we've had real difficulties with it. Unemployment is now zero, and it has decreased by 62% over the course of... Uh, our our administration. Wow, holy cow. Lots and lots of good stuff here. Lots and lots of good stuff. Food price up, industrial automation down, average temperature up. A couple of, uh, you know, less great things to see, but hey-ho. Fantastic. Legitimate leader. You have managed not only to win the election, but to take a majority of the entire electorate with you, leaving no doubt that you are this country's legitimate leader. Damn right. Landslide! Amazing victory! This is nothing short of an electoral landslide, which shows that you have fundamentally won the political argument in the minds of the electorate. Electoral success. You have managed to... You have been democratically elected for another term. Somehow, you have managed to win over the electorate to your political views. Congratulations. Thank you. That is amazing. And GDP has gone up just to... just to be awesome at the end there. Ladies and gents, thank you very, very much for watching. My name, of course, has been Odd Potato. This has been Democracy 3 Africa. We, of course, have been playing as Botswana. Until next time, folks. Bye.